please be seated for the lesson. A reading from the first letter of John. Do not love the world or the things in the world. The love of the Father is not in those who love the world. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, the pride and the riches, comes not from the Father, but from the world. And the world and its desires are passing away. But those who do the will of God live forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this afternoon is Psalm 39, found on page 638 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us recite Psalm 39, verses 4 through 8 together. My heart was hot for them. While I pondered the fire burst into flames, I spoke out with my tongue. The Lord let me know my end and the number of my days, so that I may know how short my life is. You have given me a mere handful of days, and my lifetime is as nothing in your sight. Truly, even those who stand erect are but a cup of the land. We walk about like a shadow. And in vain we are eternal. We keep up riches and cannot tell who will look at them. And now, what is my hope? O oh Lord, my hope is in you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. One Sabbath, Jesus and his disciples were going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind, and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, I got another good one for you today. <laughs> Sergius of Radanes. I'm sure everybody's heard that. <laughs> Sergius of Radanes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, he is one of the two most venerated saints in Russia. Oh. Okay. The other one being uh, someone else with a name just like that. Whose <laughs> 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 name I can't remember. Oh, is it Russian Orthodox? Yeah. Although, interestingly enough, he has been recognized. He's, he's celebrating the Anchorage. Obviously, we're celebrating him today. He died on this day in 1392. Uh, the Roman Catholics actually recognized him 40 years ago. Uh -huh. Some sort of an ecumenical kind of a move. Um, uh, but as you know, I told you, he's Russian. Uh, he was a Russian monk. He was actually born into a uh, aristocratic family. Part of what I learned was, you know, you've heard the term boyar in Russia, the boyars. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out the boyars were like the top level of the aristocracy. Ooh. They were like the equivalent of, of grand dukes. You know, we're all used to the English system. Yeah. You know, where you have the monarch, and then you have royal dukes, and then the next highest order after that are dukes. Yeah. And um, so this is the, the, they were like at that level. But then there was a change of government, so his family fell out of favor and you know, became impoverished, and they moved to this town called. Red Radonez, or Radonez Heights, perhaps, I don't know. And um, anyhow, he ended up becoming a monk. He and his brother both became monks. He, um, his brother became a monk first, and then he went to live with his brother and, and, and became a monk, and it actually became more well-known than he. Um, one of the interesting stories about him was when he was a child, he had trouble reading. 
And then, as legend holds, one day he ran into a stranger who gave him a piece of, of uh, holy bread to eat. You know, in the Orthodox tradition, um, you know, we consecrate host here, and then we consume it, and that's it. And I mean, you can you consume it when you receive it. I had one time when I was in my first parish, I was, uh, I mean, I gave the host to a woman and, and she started to walk away from the altar and I said, you need to eat that. And she goes, oh, I'm gonna take it back, I'll eat it for a bit. I'm like, no, you need to eat it now. <laughs> we had that little back and forth. And finally I had to, you know, get my authoritarian voice, to say, eat it now. She was like, I'm done. I'll get it back. Yeah, but you don't, you know, you, that's how it works, okay? Well, in the Orthodox traditions, what they do is they consecrate, uh, you know, the bread that becomes the host, but then they also consecrate a whole bunch of other bread and make it holy. It's not exactly, you know, the body and blood of Christ, but it's holy or blessed. It's holy found or something. I, I don't fully understand the theology or the concept, I just know that they do it. And then you take that home with you and you eat off of it, you know, little bits of it through the week. And so that would have been the kind of bread that this guy would have given him. And all of a sudden, he had no problem with you. Well, what if we're not? Yeah. And so what, what tradition holds is that that was an angelic visit. Oh, wow. Which cured his dyslexia or whatever it was he had. But anyhow, he you know went and joined his brother at this monastery. His brother went off somewhere else. And then he ended up becoming the abbot of this monastery. And he was into a real aesthetic lifestyle. He lived out in the woods and um, lived alone for over a year. And then started, other people started coming to him. And you know, and so a community developed around him. And so that was his first monastery. His followers through the course of, of, of his life and after founded over 40 monasteries in Russia. So he became a, a very uh, significant figure in that. And he would require each of them to live off their labors. It's like it wasn't a big, fat, rich monastic order. And you came in and got fat. You didn't go to Poland. You grew your own food. Yeah, that kind of stuff. You lived off your own labor. <laughs> um, and so that, that, you know, that's his story. <laughs> and he became a very uh, important uh, monastic influence, spiritual kind of director. And um, as I said, he's one of the two most revered saints uh, in Russia. In researching this, there's a, a picture on the one um, in Wikipedia on his thing of, um, you know, the Orthodox are a lot like the Romans. They're big into relics, mm -hmm. okay? And so his relics have been preserved. That was part of why he was canonized by the Russian church, was 40 years after he died, uh, they dug him up and his relics were incorrupt. That was always a sign that they were saintly. Oh, okay. wow. um, and uh, so his relics have been, uh, you know, had, had, his relics have been uh, venerated for a long time. Um, during the uh, Soviet era in Russia, there was, the Bolsheviks wanted his head was somewhere, <laughs> and um, the Bolsheviks wanted it destroyed. I guess it was, a, it was a symbol of resistance. Part of it for him was he was he was always very non-political, um, and uh, he, there was one instance where he did pray for uh, the local king. I, 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 I'm not sure this was around the time of the czars yet, and as they were going off to a battle, but he only prayed for him after he determined that he had exhausted every possible diplomatic course to achieve peace with all the war, and so. Uh, the Bolsheviks wanted to destroy this, and there was this one guy that ended up in the gulag and died. And the thinking is he was executed because he wouldn't reveal where the head was. But one of the pictures on the Wikipedia site then is, you know, after the war, then after uh, after World War II, uh, they recovered it. And he's in the cathedral that bears his name now near this town where he was from. And um, so his relics are there in a glass sarcophagus. There's a picture of Vladimir Putin making this visit. And of course, for Vladimir, they opened it up so he can look at the top. <laughs> you did get scared after. But of course, yeah, I mean, that'd be something, wouldn't it? <laughs> you know, that's interesting what you say going back to the 1300s where they were the Bolsheviks were using custard leaves and 
Russia today is the same thing. It seems like historically they have a way of getting damage. Russia has a very long blood subject yeah, history. It's, yeah, like yeah, it's, it's incredible. I didn't realize you went that far. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And further. Mm -hmm. yeah. There was, must be a climate. Or something. Yeah. Right. That's interesting. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, just, uh, and then the, uh, who's the uh, head of the church over there, the Orthodox Church? The Patriarch. Uh, yeah, the Patriarch or something. Mm -hmm. And I guess he's bashing Putin. Yeah, he's getting a lot of grief for it. I don't sort of understand how he's. Well, speaking of that, this guy here, Sergius, um, you know, as he gained prominence and everything, the Patriarch of Moscow, as he was getting old, called him and asked him to be his successor. And Sergius said, No, thank you. I'd rather be a monk than a bishop. And turned him down. <coughs> Well, you know, you make jokes about that in seminary because every class has a few people that we used to say uh, have been wearing the purple in their eyes. <laughs> and um, you know, the one that we used to say is if you want to be bishop, that's the first sign that you shouldn't be bishop. Or if you want it too much. You know, you're striving for that office. We had one guy in my class that the joke we had <coughs> was bad, of course, was uh, that when he got ordained to the priesthood, he was being ordained to the transitional priesthood. <laughs> And was already fitted for his purple shirt. Right now. <laughs> Did he ever get his purple shirt? No. Not yet. I saw that in the military, so it's mm -hmm. bonkers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they don't apply to my bill, but. Yeah. Oh, every organization. Yeah. And you know, the church is the church, but it's also a human organization. That's right. Yeah, it's a yeah, human organization. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that play the politics of the church. Had a couple of rectors like that. Just a lot of people. A lot of people are making a hard time adjusting to it. You know, they go into the vernacular, you know, uniform. You know, they really want to get to know and a lot of their stuff that you know is going to be able to be retired before you know it because it doesn't really mean anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just wears different clothes. I had a hard time with that. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I remember as a child, you know, I never seen my priest outside of college. And I don't know why, but my mother stopped by the church. And here was this guy in navy pants and a red shirt. And I said, hey, who's that? And she said, well, that's Father Bill. I'm like, huh? I mean, he wore real close. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah, we do that. So yeah, I know. You don't want to go by your house and see one. <laughs> You're welcome to see me out there mowing the lawn in gym shorts. <laughs> we won't be able to take that vision. No. <laughs> I'm not going by. <laughs> so any other questions about Sergius or monastic life in Russia in the 14th century? Sergius, what was his last name again? His last name was of Radones, which is the town he was from. That's how I'm pronouncing it. Could be a lot more than this. No, no, no. You could be right. I don't know. I don't speak Russian. Did they, did they say anything about any of his relics being disseminated to other churches and stuff? No, that doesn't mean there not, isn't a thumbnail over here and a you know, <laughs> little toe over here or something. Yeah. Like that. No, but they have it, it's they have most of it. It's in this church. Like I said, there was a cathedral that it ultimately got named after him. And um it's all within this glass sarcophagus. You brought something up that's interesting. And I've, I've seen that. There was there's um hold that thought. But if you go to Jerusalem and you go to the Mount of Olives, and if you come down uh, what is traditionally held to be the route that you know Jesus took down the Mount of Olives as he went into the city on Palm Sunday, you go past the Russian Orthodox Church. And uh, they have a saint in there whose name I can't remember. Um, and, and it's the same thing. She's in a glass 
sarcophagus, and she's covered with, you know, a satin comforlet, you know, but you can see the shape. Of course, it's about this long, so, but, yeah, there's, there's what's left of her whole body. Well, you also say that in Rome, at, in St. Peter's, that there's oh, there's that dead one popes, pope. yeah, dead popes in the altars. And then the other person buried at that church, Mary Magdalene, the, uh, it's a Greek Orthodox church, mm -hmm. um, is Prince Philip's mother. Yeah, I know. So I read that. She was, she was the convent. She was the abbess yeah. of the convent. There's a picture of her when Elizabeth at the, the coronation. She, of course, I mean, she was pretty crazy, too. Yeah, so um, she suffered a lot during the war, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of losing her convent and stuff. But um, there's a picture of her at the coronation, and she's in full Mother Superior drag, and it's like you know she's coming down the aisle, she's like, I've got a train on this black dress that's about 15 feet long, and <laughs> yeah, no pride there. Yeah. So, but when she died, you know, they, they it was a couple of years before they were able to bury her. It took them it took a lot of um, negotiating and all of that to make that happen because that was her desire to be buried in Jerusalem at this church on the Mount of Olives. And finally, when he came through, it was like they got a phone call in the middle of the night and said, "Okay, we're and they left at six o'clock in the morning." It was like, "Okay, we got permission to do it now." And they flew and flew back. Otherwise, it would change your mind. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned relics. Now, if I remember right, as a child, a relic was something that they touched. Now, was this part of the body, or was it also part of the body? The parts of the body. Okay, so basically, the body. their body, their entire body is. A a lot of times, yeah. One thing I know you have a little fancy relic yeah, where you the little, little stuff, yeah. and you know, and you'll look and you'll read the little thing, and this this holds, you know, a, a distal phalanx, you know, the end of the little left finger yeah. of Saint So and So, and it's in this thing, and all these the jewels and everything. The round thing is in the center or something. Well, the round thing in the center with the host is a monstrance. Okay. Oh, yes. A reliquary is just a fancy container for yeah. a yeah. relic. Yeah, and some of them are just, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. They got a lot of places to go, so. When I was in D.C., uh, the shrine of uh, St. John Paul II, in his chapel, there's a big gold cross, and right in the middle of it is a vial of his blood. That was kind of Strange. Yes. <laughs> Please talk. That's interesting. He's just not a painter or something. Yeah. Well, he's in an altar in St. Peter's Basilica. He is in an altar in St. Peter's Basilica, too. Didn't he take the, the altar of the chapel of St. St. Sebastian? Oh, okay. They, but they, he, they're not showing him. It just says across the front, you know, John Paul, so John, John Paul. And yes, he was buried in the same crypt as John Tony Third. Church, um, particularly the Long Island Santiago de Compostela. Santiago de Compostela. I was just there a couple of months ago. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it just that cave of Jones that is It's supposed to be his tomb. It's supposed to be his tomb. And it's um, I mean, they took him somewhere else and they brought him back. He had been somewhere else and they very much brought him back. I thought it was just his uh, It might have been during some kind of conflict because he, he was, in, according to the legend, he was discovered in the field there. And that's why that's where it is. And then the cathedral was built there. And then they had a tomb for him. And then they changed the tomb, I don't know, about 60 years ago. So if you go there, you can actually, you can go to the tomb. It's yeah, down yeah, underneath it's down. the high altar. Right. And it's, you know, this really pretty urn kind of a thing. Yeah. But then when you come back up the stairs on the other side, overlooking the altar and the nave is a, a big jeweled bust of him. Right. And then you come up behind it and you hug him. And that's, you know, that's the point of your pilgrimage. But yeah, he was found by you know some I don't know, farmer or something. And they found it and then they came there 
one bishop came and said, yes, that's what this is. And so then, and then that's why it became the site. That's why it's been a pilgrimage site for a thousand years. And the scallop shell is the sign for that. That's one of the symbols for St. James. You know, if you, when you go there and there's all these signs for the people that are actually walking the Camino, that the signs are a scallop shell and then a marrow. It's like, oh, Pat goes this way. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Oh, Let us stay before God those for whom we offer our Salvation. We praise, praise and thank you, thank you, O Lord. For this son you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We, we praise, praise you and thank, thank you, O Lord. God, the Holy Spirit, who made our bodies the temple of your presence. We, we praise, praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move. Have our being. We praise, praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, we are no feeling games to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord, our life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are strong, answers of the phone, a knowledge of your will, and awareness of your presence. Hear, Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of the spirit. Hear, Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy, and patience. Hear, Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are dear. Hear we us, O Lord of life. Restore to holiness whether it is broken by human sin in our lives and in our nation and in the world. Hear, Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have, you have declared, declared your power among the peoples. With you, O oh Lord, is the way of life. And, and in your light we see light. Hear us, O oh Lord of life. Hear, Hear us and make us whole. Bless us, Lord. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send your blessing on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <sighs> Most merciful God, we confess the sins against you in thought, word, and in deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and may humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. you. God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make with your vows to the most high. right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you father almighty creator of heaven and earth because in the obedience of your saints you have given us an example of righteousness and in their eternal joy a glorious pledge of the hope of our calling therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and the archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people. In your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died, for us our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. 
We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Sergius and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to stand. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you, and may use us to be great as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
May God the Father bless you, God the Son heal you, God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God the Holy and Undivided Trinity guard your body, save your soul, and bring you safely to that heavenly country where God lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.